what you are searching for is where you are searching from. When I, when I, when I first heard that, it's break it down like nice and slow. Okay. You are searching. So I'm searching for peace. You already are peace. You are searching for love. You already are love. You are searching for worthiness. You already are worthy. You are searching for um, abundance. You are already abundant. And so it's in the search that we, we, get, we get tangled because that's mind. How can you be looking for or working towards what you already are? And it's there's nothing to be because that is a narrated story. So, like, to, to I I will in order to be happy, you know, I got to have the house and then the job, you know, and then the the kids and the picket fence. No, 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 no. You be happy. You are happy. And it, you, what you're searching for, you yeah. are searching from. <laughs> and it it's it's this gap that we think we need yeah. out here before we have here and it's the exact same thing it's the it's the parallel it's the the we are that mirror you know yeah and that's why like what's interesting is um because you know, mainly here in the united states and again i'm just saying this from an output because we live here and other stuff but we have a lot of technology and we have a lot of ability to voice ourselves so I've also find people too that start studying other philosophies, mainly Eastern and stuff, and they say, "Well, people here and people there do this," but I'm like, "That's just a perception, and one isn't better than the other. Just people express themselves differently." And why we fall into this searching is because you see someone and you notice their happiness, and now you're trying to ex- um, trying to um, reverse engineer what they're doing. And I'm like, it isn't what they're doing. It's making them happy. They're happy allows them to do what they're doing, but it isn't the causation. So when we get caught up in the outside world in the examination, we're always going to be searching because you're never going to touch it because everything is fleeting. So you're trying to grab something. It's like getting in a movie theater and you notice that the beam of light is coming through the, the theater and hitting the screen. So what do you say? What happens if I put my hand up? I can watch the movie closer. It's like I'm trying to grab the movie. I'm like, yeah, it's not going to affect you anything because you're trying to grab for something that's not grabbable. The outside world is not grabbable. It's always fleeting. It's what we call inside. And what is inside? It's a concept. I'm like, inside my brain, you could open the brain up. But no, that's still a tangible, physical thing. But there's something else out there in the spiritual realm. Where where's it come from? I don't know. I don't know where to put my finger on it. But when I use the concept of inside, I can use like a physical object, but yet it's still a concept for me to actually get my brain there, uh, to wrap my head around it if it's possible. But I realize if I'm literally looking at someone and saying, oh, that person's happy. They look like they have a great life. What are they doing? What do they own? Uh, you know, oh, uh, I want a girl that looks like that. Uh, uh, you know, I want that car. And then you think if you had all that stuff. <laughs> then I'll be happy. Yeah, you'll be happy. Or you actually, now you're just a carbon copy. <laughs> and you funny. probably creep the dude out or the woman out that you're trying to copy, right? So, it was that movie years ago with, um, I think it was Patricia Arquette and uh, Madonna. Hmm. It was called Desperately Seeking Susan. Okay. And I think, I, I, I think it was Patricia Arquette. Um, or one of the Arquette sisters. I think, I, I can't remember. But um, this woman was following around. Yeah, she was seeking out Susan, who was played by, if I'm getting this right, Madonna, years ago. Okay. And she was trying to mimic her and copy her because she felt enamored with her. And she was trying to do it, but you can't. You just come across as a stalker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And this is how stalking and all these odd, um, awkward behaviors begin. They think that person has something you want, so you want to capture that person. You lock them up in the room. You do this. You hold captivity in your mind. You, you, know, you don't have to hold someone um, locked up uh, with chains and stuff like that to actually put a mindset of holding on to it. We see it in relationships all the time. But what do you think that person has that you don't have? Because they're just a concept. 
So searching came from looking at the outside world to examine. So, oh, I climbed a tree and it made me happy. So now you actually own a forest and you start chopping down trees. Like, I'm like, no, no. You were happy. You just happened to be in the woods. You happened to climb a tree that day. You were happy. You just happened to be at the beach. The beach had nothing to do with it. The beach was an expression of it. The tree was an expression of your happiness. The relationship you're in with is an expression of your happiness. It's not the causation of your happiness. Once you take the relationship, the outside thing, as the, the happiness, this is where all arguing and fighting starts. Now you got to get that person to do what you want to do. And it, it's always, and it always starts the first day you actually felt happy around them. It's usually like the first date or the first time, uh, you know, you know, the excitement of something happened. So now you want them like, hey, honey, <laughs> Put that uh, maid's outfit on again. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny though, you know, but, but that's 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 the reason. Like, I will if you put the pool boy outfit on. <laughs> but that's like, the reason those the the that that yeah. exists is exactly that. It's because we we read it backwards. You put the carriage in front of the horse, rather yeah. than the horse in front of the carriage. So when you actually have the horse in front of the carriage, you're no longer searching. You're just experiencing and exploring. Is a difference. You're, explora- you're exploring the unknown. You're not searching. You're just exploring it. You're having an experience, but you're no longer searching for it. It's like searching for the car driving around town. You realize when you pass by a, a shiny plate glass window and you realize, holy shit, I'm in the goddamn car I've been searching for. Now let's go on a vacation. Yeah. But you didn't realize you were in the car because you couldn't see the reflection. You just saw the inside of the car. You are already it. Now go experience the unknown. Stop searching for something so you can have the unknown experience. You are already here. You are already there.